Hello, and welcome to Sports Fire. I am your sports nerd, Rojo, here to bring you the hottest sports update, rumors, and news. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, Mr. Randall Bailey himself, the knockout king himself, people. But before I introduce Randall and let him begin to speak, let me just go over a key points that Wikipedia, if you pull them up, will say about him. It says, Randall Bailey, born September 13, 1974, is an American professional boxer, a veteran of the sport for over 20 years, he's a former world champion in two weight classes, that's two weight classes, having held the WBO light welterweight title from 1999 to 2000 and the IBF welterweight title in 2012. Additionally, he held the WBA interim lightweight welterweight title in 2002, nicknamed the Knockout King for his exceptional knockout power. Bailey is considered one of the hardest punchers in boxers history. history. That's amazing, sir. That's amazing. Hey, happy to have you on the show, my brother. How's life, man? Everything great. Just chilling, living every day. That's it. That's what's up, man. Good to link up with you. I ain't seen you in a while. Been a couple of years now, but we linked before. But it's good to have you on the show. Appreciate you for coming too, man. Any anytime, anytime. Yeah, I just want all my viewers out there on YouTube world and wherever else you at. To respect, I'm gonna give my homeboys roses while he's living, not wait for him to be deceased because he is a boxing hero for our neighborhood at least. You know what I'm saying? The champ, if you was here, you see these, right? <laughs> I probably could, <laughs> but you good. You out of town, so you good. Huh? Anyway, <laughs> check this out. So, when you pull up different sites on uh, about your record or whatever, some people may say it was like 46 and 39. 56 and 39. What was your record? I have no idea. I stopped keeping track of it a long time ago. I think I, after, after about 30 fights, I kind of like, eh, it just was coming too fast. I think it's like um, 40, I want to say like 42 and nine, something like that. Wow. 46 and nine, somewhere around up in there. I know I had like 50, 54 fights, I think it is. That's an impressive record if people don't know. To be at a professional level and you fight that many times and you win that many times, that's like, that's not average. The average human can't do that. If we could, we all would do it. How many <laughs> of those people did you actually knock out, Lee Sleep? Um... Like, I mean, you could you could knockouts would come in all different kind of fashions. You could knock a guy down three times. That's considered a knockout. Uh, a guy could not come out for the next round, and that could be considered a knockout. But guys out of knock out unconscious, uh, I think I think probably unconscious people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would probably be in like the 20s, like 20s, probably 20 something. Yeah, that's yeah. power though. Unconscious. <laughs> Unconscious. Yeah, I almost spit out my water. Um, <laughs> nah, but that's real though. What do you think? Why do you think God gave you that mighty blow in your right hand? Oh, man. That, that is an amazing question. I ask myself that all the time. And I still haven't come up with the answer. But um it was it's it's kinda it's kinda it's good and it's scary at the same time, you know, because it hadn't got to a point where like when I when I would hit people and knock knock them out and you see a person laying there on the ground, unconscious, not moving. I mean, you don't know if they're gonna wake up or not. And I mean, it just it just got to a point it started to get a little scary. You know what I'm saying? You hit somebody that hard and they they out on the ground. I mean, I done knock guys out so bad that way dudes be laying on the ground and their eyes be open, but their body is not responding. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it just just got kind of weird. Okay, so you do have a conscience when you're in the ring fighting. 
Yeah, it kind of it it, it kind of played. Uh, I don't know. It kind of it kind of made me not really want to train as hard. Some fights, you know, what I'm saying when I would fight guys, I knew that I was better than, and I knew I could possibly hurt them. I wouldn't train as hard, you know what I'm saying, because I knew I was gonna win anyway. But I wouldn't train as hard because I knew the damage I could do if I would go in at a thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? I never thought about that. Wow. So it's kind of a guilt and a curse. Yeah, it, it kind of backfired on me sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? I don't worry about it. <laughs> Man, never thought of that. That's wow. Yeah, because you're giving this hand that it doesn't even matter if it's a 12th round and I may be down in points. Did you ever rely on that? Like ever, ever cross the back of your mind and say, well, I know I just need this, just this thing to touch him in the out of that. Did you ever like think about that when you was in the ring and you feel oh, like yeah. down in points? Oh yeah. I've done it plenty of times. Okay. Yeah. All right. So champ, I want to know, well, the viewers, cause I know a lot about it, but the viewers want to know, tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up in Miami. Um, how was your upbringing and everything like that? How many siblings you have? mom your dad just tell us about your life man growing up i mean we started out in, in scott projects that's where we came from we moved out to Kara city in like 81 and it was me my mom my grandma my sister you know what i'm saying my aunts my uncles you know we all moved out there in like 81 you know and that's pretty much where I spent most of my growing up time, you know, in Kara City, North County, Buccaneer Park. That was like majority of my time was spent there at school and at the park. That's real. Shout out to the ball, man. Shout out to Layton Sir, Buccaneer. And I'm going to tell the viewers an interesting story. So when me, and the champ, Randall Bailey, was in elementary school. We probably was like in the maybe the third or fourth grade. And Randall was real fast. And we used to always play throw up tackle every morning in the field, <laughs> all the boys. And one day, I guess Randall came to school in an old bad mood or something like that. So we out there playing. So somebody touched Randall, or whatever, doing, you know, throw up football. So Randall turned around and he told everybody, everybody who was playing, it didn't matter what age it was, he said, the next one of y'all touched me. I'm gonna knock your ass out. So was like, wow. So I'm thinking, damn, I'm fast. More than likely, I'm gonna run Randall ass down. And <laughs> oh, I play it out. Randall takes off again. Randall, I already warned everybody, don't touch me. And I could see a lot of people is not gonna touch Randall. So I touched Randall. And when Randall turned around, I just swung on him. When the fight was over, I was asking people, where's Randall? He was that fast. I didn't even see him. Where is he at? I'm still from a random to this day. <laughs> funny story. Oh, I, think, funny. I, think was, I didn't think you was going to bring that shit up. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up. I'm real. The man was meant to be a boss. So when you met him and you don't even know where this guy's at anymore, you can feel yourself getting hit, but you don't know where he's at. <laughs> just me, uh, God. I think we can tell the same story. So it's not just me, people. Um, oh, he was raw back then. But uh, when you had a conversation, you said that your sister really was the fighter and you just caught on from her. Yeah, man. I mean, you got to think, we ca we came from Scott Projects. My sister was putting hands on people before we even moved out to Kara City. Gotcha. You know, she, was, she was the main one. I never... You know, let me see. I started, I ain't start fighting until I got out to North County. And I think my first fight was with um, you remember Warner's Bennett? Yeah, I remember Warner's. Oh, Warner. My first fight right there in first grade. It was graduation day. And I don't know what he did. I know it has something to do with my wife right now. It has something to do with Dion. Wow. And, oh, and, and that was all that was all it took. And I lay hands on him. That probably was like my first time really, really fighting by myself. Okay. Did a good job. 
Huh? Did you do a good job at it, or was Warners? Warners, no, Warners. Man, Warners. I put hands on Warners. <laughs> 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 you also <clears throat> God bless the on um, the twins too, man, out of Baja, Rodney and Big Man. The twins yeah. people don't know the twins was like they were considered red nosed pit bulls. Uh-huh. Baddest goddamn kids in the neighborhood. Baddest in the neighborhood. Street light come on, they still out there. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, when we first moved out to Kansas City, I mean literally like probably the first week. Me and my sister was at the skating ring right there at the park. Remember, we had the skating ring at the park. Yeah, they had made the skating ring right there. Yeah. We there. Uh, we planned, me and my sister, and they came up there just, I mean, just stopped bothering us for no reason at all. That was the twins. Only reason I didn't have a problem with the twins, because one of the twins, I can't remember exactly which one it was, uh, mm -hmm. one of them, like my sister, Sharissa. Oh, okay. I ain't have to have no problems with them. You could tell sometimes I got on their nerves and they wanted to do something, but they loved us so much. So let me tell you something. My sister beat the brakes off of them so bad. <laughs> so bad. I'm talking about my sister by herself. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I was I was just standing there. Beat them so bad. They went home and got their whole family and they came around our house. Wow. But they didn't know they didn't know where we had just came from. We we just moved, we just moving out of Scott Project. This shit was like regular. Yeah, it's, it's peaceful over here. I got aunties, uncles. I mean, it was a it was a nowhere situation. They had to take that one on back home. They came around there with all that and walked back home with the same <laughs> ass on them. Hey, that L. <laughs> Man. I, I got man, good lord, have mercy. I could I could talk about all the fights my I see my sister fight, but good lord, have mercy. Yeah, she, I heard she about was that fight. With I say, yeah, that, that kid's serious. I picked it up. I picked it up later. Like once I got out to Care City, I think after I start hanging out by myself, you know, my own friends, then I started to like get my own love. Uh, Swag far as knowing how to fight for myself. Come on, sister, come fight everybody for me. Yeah, she tried. She tried, but and we couldn't go like that. <laughs> yeah, that was my sister. Every fight, even when me and you fought, um, when I started <laughs> fighting, she found you. She had you in the head lock. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there like, why couldn't <laughs> she, I have done that? She was taller than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, but it didn't work out that way for me. <laughs> so, you know, something about them girls back then. Man. Hey, man, girls was girls, man. They was a lot tougher back then than they is now. Yeah, way tougher and way more respectful, but I ain't going to get into it right now. But I had a question for you, champ. So, um, what made you like really get into the boxing profession itself? Like, what made you, um, what steered you to that direction? I did used to get in a lot of fights. Right. Like fights, fights, it wasn't, it didn't have to be about nothing. It was just about fighting. You know what I'm saying? Just, I just wanted to fight. If somebody had a problem, let's just get it over with. Let's fight. I mean, and I was fighting a lot. I'm talking about everywhere I went. It's like I was a magnet to, to trouble. Right. And it had done got to the point where, you know what I'm saying, dudes was getting, you hit by a dude done whooped on somebody. And next thing you know, who don't win and got a gun, it came back and shot. Shot dudes, so you know what I'm saying. That 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 kind of started coming into play a lot when dudes would start getting beat up a lot, and I was known for putting hands on people. I just and it really wasn't about no tough. Cause if I lost, I lost. You know what I'm saying? It didn't mean nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I just if it was a part, I just wanted to fight. Period. So. It just got to a point where I was like, man, I just told myself this, like, I, it's going to be a situation. And I just had to find somewhere I could go where I could just fight and not get in trouble for it. 
So, you know, I was at the crib one day just chilling and I just called called up down to um to the city because they had a gym down there and then me and all my friends we always pass by there all the time and we always said we we're gonna go in there but we never did so one day i was just home chilling i called down there and got all the information i told my mom and she took me on down there and shit, it was like that was like i want to say like probably november december of 88 88 and ain't, ain't, ain't looked back since. Okay, so what what kept you focused? Because um, I know you had a lot of friends that some went to school, some um, went to the streets or whatever. What kept you away from like like pursuing your dreams? Like, cause you could have said, nah, you know, I want to box, but at the same time, I still want to thug it out with the fellas on the block. What kept you like on that straight and narrow? I mean, that I, I didn't, I didn't, I um. It came so easy. The boxing came so easy to me till it was like, eh, I ain't even gotta focus or really practice at it because I, I, I got it already. You know what I'm saying? Like my first day in the gym, I learned how to throw my jab, my right hand, just doing the basics. My second day in the gym, it was guys that came over to our gym to spar our team. And what I do, my second day in there, you put me in. I'm in the beating on dudes who got like five fights already. Just from natural experience. Just, just from what I learned my first day in the gym, I used that my second day in the gym to beat up on somebody that had more experience than me. Okay. You know, so <clears throat> after a while, I just stopped coming to the gym. They would call me, they would call me like a week before the fight and be like, we got fights this Friday. I be like, all right, I'm coming in, coming in the gym Monday, so I can get me a good week of training there. <laughs> and I would still go go to fights, knock guys out, beat guys, without really even putting in real training work. You know what I'm saying? Just with a lot of natural ability. Right, You're getting big headed. You just know you could do this. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? It kind of it kind of deterred my focus a little bit, and I kind of was able to have one foot in, one foot out, and still be running around in the street. And then when I want to come to the gym, I just come to the gym. You know what I'm saying? So at what age, what point in life did you start to say, you know what, let me just take it serious. Let me leave the street alone. Let me start dibbling and dabbling. Let me just focus right now. Let me see. This was this had to be like in 90, 95. 95? 90, yeah, 95. I had went to... um. I had went to Connecticut and came back. And when I came back, I was just like kind of out there a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't I had done, I ain't had no job, no nothing, you know what I'm saying? I had I had a son already. You know what I'm saying? And it's like trouble, trouble kept finding me. I ended up getting locked up for like two months on my second gun charge. And um interesting, didn't know about this. I like this here. Tell us about it. Yeah, like yeah, that was my second, I had got just riding around in the city, me and a couple of my homeboys, and and they didn't know I had a gun on me, because I, I always keep a gun on me. So they didn't know I had a gun on me. So when the police pulled us over, they they made us all get out the car. So as we as we get out the car, I was able to pull the gun out and throw the gun under the car without the police even seeing it. Okay, so you were talented <laughs> in both worlds, boxing and the streets. You were yeah. swift. No, it wasn't no boxing at this point. It wasn't no boxing. It was strictly street. Strictly it was street. Strictly street. You know what I'm saying? So um, they about to let us go. And one of the police just happened to look under the car and snatched us all out again. I was like, God damn. And you know what I'm saying? My homeboys who I was with, they didn't even know I had a gun on me. So I wasn't gonna let them take that charge like that. You know what I'm saying? They were gonna take us all down. And I was like, nah, it's mine. And I went ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't have to do all that. But I went ahead and took it and um, it's like, 
I went in August 29th and I'm like, okay, forget, I just stand here 21 days and do my 21 and they'll let me out. But the 21 days came and they didn't let me out. <laughs> came and up, gone. Huh? The 21 came and gone. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't let me out. So I ended up having to, to bond out. I think I got out uh, October 15th. I remember these days. I got out October 15th. And right then and there, I just told myself I'm not going back. You know what I'm saying? It it kind of broke me broke me down because I didn't know where I was going where I was going to start from where I was going how I was going to end. I just knew I wasn't gonna continue to go that route. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I sat in I sat in there for almost two months and something with a five hundred dollar bond. And yeah. mind you, you, I got, you just wanted to sit. Hey, I ain't had no money at the time. I ain't had no money at the time, but I had friends, well, so-called friends that had money and they let me sit there for two and a half months with a $500 bond. That right there let me know I needed to find somewhere else to be. Yeah, I need a whole change of friends, scenery. Exactly, exactly. So prior to, get, prior to getting out, you know who, um, my, uh, this chick I was dealing with, and and um, one of my good one of my good buddies, they put the money together and they they came and got me. That's what's up. That's what you know. It really got your back when you're in your toughest time, your darkest hours. Yeah, they came and got me, and um, I ain't looked back since then. I just I, I immediately getting out the gym. I think my homeboy, one of my homeboys out the city, dude named Tap. He um he came and he grabbed me and he got me back going to the gym. You know what I'm saying? I had done got a little efficiency and didn't know how I was gonna pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So my homeboy tap and Larry Dog, comedian Larry Dog. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yep, my homeboy tap and Larry Dog, they used to go half and pay for my efficiency every month. They gave me a bike, they gave me a bike and paid my rent for me. And that's how I was able to get to the gym every day. I, they told me I ain't had no excuses not to make it to the gym because the gym was like right around the corner, right up the street from where, where my efficiency was. Right. And for 62nd, I had efficiency right down on 61st and 29th Terrace, okay. right there. So. They used to pay. They used to pay the rent for me, and you know what I'm saying. I would make little money here and there. My sister used to used to give me like a couple dollars every month for food and shit like that. And hey, man, I took that. You know what I'm saying. I ain't. I ain't. I, wasn't, I ain't worried about what other people was getting and what they had or whatnot. I just was worried about me. You know what I'm saying. I just told myself. I'm gonna get, I can get all that. As long as I stick to what I'm doing, the money gonna come. Win, 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 win. You know what I'm saying? That's all I thought about. I like that. That's man, that's real though. I call that faith, vision, and a dream. All I know is I gotta just stand fast right now, do the right thing, believe, and it'll come. Like you say, I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know it's coming. When I used to get up, I used to get up in the middle of the night and jog up 62nd. Now, I ain't jog towards High Lillway. I'm jogging straight up towards the beans. In the hood, yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm, and it's like 12, 12 o'clock in the morning, at night, one in the morning, I'm on the road running. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, everybody in the city kind of knew, knew who I was and what I was doing. So. I ain't, I ain't had no problems. You know what I'm saying? This, I love this. This, this is good. Community know who you are. Dude used to, used, to con, used to see me jogging, blow, and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? And I, I used to go from 27, I used to jog from 27 all the way up to 
to 12th Ave and back. Oh, that's a good little run now. Straight up 62nd and back. Yeah, straight up. That's a good little run. Plus, it's a good little scenery, too. You get to see everything. At, 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 at 12 in the morning, at night, at 12 in the morning at night, you don't know what you're going to see. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be a maze. It's going to be a story you're going to tell. It's all, I mean, it's all type of crap going on around you. And I just, I'm just jogging. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Stay in focus, man. So, champ, I got a viewer that wants to ask you a question. I'm going to go ahead and read the question to you. Mm. They wanted to know, were there any boxers that you didn't get to fight that you would have loved to fight? Oh, yeah. It was a, I mean, it's a, I, it's, we'll run out of time in the show. We're trying to put all this <laughs> thing. I mean, the business, the business is not fair. You know what I'm saying? Having power is a gift and a curse. You know, it, I, I've, man, I've been having fighters turn down fights against me my whole career. And why is that? I mean, I didn't get in. I, I got into this. I got in the boxing to fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what these guys in boxing for now. They don't want to fight each other. If they see a guy that's too tough, they're going to try to stay away from him. I mean, if you're in the same division as a guy, I mean, forget how tough he is. You should you should fight him. That was my point. Yeah, because that is what the fans pay to see. Because when you say you're a boxer, you're a boxer. You do this seriously. You're not like the average Joe who fights. I mean, I I, 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 for, I I stayed in boxing for 20 years. That was like, you know how many, it's, it's like three generations under me that came up in boxing that I was there with where guys would to stay out my way so they wouldn't have to fight me. So this is something big that normally goes in or goes on in boxing. They're still doing this to this day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's why it's so hard to make make the fights people want to see. Yeah, that's sad. But I guess it's all about the money. I guess I guess I mean if that make them sleep better at night. <laughs> yeah, like you said, uh, you came in to box. You came in the ring to fight. I came in to fight. When Mike Tyson came, everybody knew he came to fight. Yeah. What was about? Speaking of Mike Tyson, did you see Mike Tyson destroy that guy on the plane that was taunting him? Yeah, the guy was literally all in his face. and I mean, stuff like that don't happen to me. Oh, that doesn't happen to you? Nah. Okay. That's good. But I don't have to, I, say if that would have happened to you, you're on a flight, guy keep heckling you, won't leave you alone. You warned him numerous of time. I wouldn't, have gave, I, wouldn't have gave, I wouldn't have gave him no warning. No warning? No warning. It's just sleep, sleep. On site. That's it. You want it, I'm going to give it to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like that. So you don't worry about the repercussion because your hands are illegal? If they know me, they know me. If they don't, I got. Let me tell you something. I got into a situation. Uh, guy had to be like a hundred, and he was like one one ninety, one ninety five, about six three. Mm -hmm. You know, he had been running a little chops a little too much, and I just when I got when I got to him, I got to him, and now he want to call the police. Had the police call my phone. I talked to the police. I'm like, look, I'm like, look, sir, officer, I'm 140 pounds. I ain't had to say no more. <laughs> That's true. This guy was like 190, 195, 63. Yeah, that's intimidating. He could, he could possibly do some bodily harm. On the phone, called the police on somebody 5'9, 140 pounds. That's all I talk. I say, officer. I'm 140 pounds and I'm five nine. I was hung up. They ain't called me back. Exactly. Anybody should have called the police. Should have been me. I'm the smaller guy. <laughs> it happened. Man, I saw a dude when I was in the military. Big on um, 
I'm gonna say one of them country white boys too, one of them big ones. Look like he'd be on the farm. So he big, he probably like six four, probably like 255 or maybe better. And I happen to hear some rumble going on upstairs on the next floor. So I get up there, man, that's a little Mexican. He probably about five, seven, 125. He beating them so bad. The big country boy yells, somebody please get him off me. <laughs> True story. So next question for you, man, that I had, to, uh, I wanted to ask you, tell me about your training, your conditioning, and how important that plays a role in your career. I mean, conditioning, you definitely want to be conditioned because, man, them, them three-minute rounds, man, them three minutes could feel like 30 minutes if you ain't in shape because if you can't, move around and keep somebody off your ass, it's gonna be over real soon. Yeah, you gotta be able to move. I mean, we we done had guys come in the gym and I'm talking about be dead, dead tired. Like they've been running for hours, three minutes. Three, three minutes. And they done. Three minutes and done. So you definitely that that is a major, 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 major part. I really, I really didn't start using a, a, a strength and conditioner until like late in my career. Cause I mean, with all the stuff they got now with uh supplements and all this stuff, you don't know what people want. You know what I'm saying? So I I mean, I was just going off the regular. Regular smegular stuff. You you get up in the morning, you go do your road work, you go to the gym, you do your thing, you eat right, and this, 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 that, everything should be all right. But now they just got so much stuff going on right now. They they Yeah, uh, you was doing it, you was doing it the honest way, how you supposed to do it. And now they got supplements and all kind of other stuff that gonna help you get help your oxygen stay longer and all that stuff. Yeah, I ain't know nothing about all that stuff. Yeah, it's different now. Like you say, they're making so many chemicals. It's not a telling what these boxes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just too much, too much. Another question for you. Um, have you ever, like, before a fight, you was already intimidated by another fighter? Like, you was possibly scared before the fight even started? That's a question you want to ask me. Yeah, I want to ask you this, Mr. <laughs> Pringle, knockout. You know what? That probably, that probably was... One of my curses that no matter who I fought, I would never scare of nobody. Like I didn't have fear to go in there and do whatever I wanted to do. And that probably was a, 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 a curse for me because it probably made me a little more lax. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It made me a little more lax and left me acceptable to get hit with punches I probably shouldn't have got hit with. Right. Uh, well, so I, like I, always, like I always tell fighters, I always tell fighters, it's good to have a little bit of butterflies, not scary butterflies, but just uh, a little nervousness to where you don't want to make no mistakes. Yeah, so you don't get overconfidence in them. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason why I asked you that was because Mike Tyson was like, um, mainly before any one of his fights, he used to be nervous, like scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that part. I used to I used to be like that too. Because like I said, when you when you hit somebody and you see the effect that you have on that person, like you hit somebody, like I done hit guys and they it was they career, their careers are over. You know what I'm saying? They ain't coming back for another one. It's done. Done deal. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That that kind of play play in your head a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I and, it's, and, it's, and it's kind of scary because I mean you wanna you wanna make a living, but you don't wanna make it at the cost of somebody else ruin, ruining their life and you know what I'm saying, them not being able to live a functional life because you done bust them upside the head and scramble their marbles. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, scramble their <laughs> <they> marbles. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. <laughs> hey, so have you ever hung out with Mike Tyson? Um, well, two questions. 
I was done King as a promoter and everything. And have you ever hung out with Mike Tyson? You know what? I'm gonna go with Don first. Don is one of the best dudes. You know what I'm saying? That's a he's just a real ass dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm, Close. You have to you have to open your mouth and talk to Don. If not, you're gonna get talked for. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Talk to Don or you're gonna get talked for. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, I just with Mike Tyson, I was young and you know, people people who used to tell you certain stuff about people, you know what I'm saying? Like they just told they used to they used to try to scare me and tell well, I don't think they were trying to scare me, but they used to tell me how crazy he was and this and that. And my trainer used to go up to Don house every Saturday. He'd go right down 95th, grab some ribs off of 95th, where the, mm -hmm. the church at. The rib, yeah, he, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot right there, grab about two racks and go up to Don house and chill, chill on Saturdays when we leave the gym. And he'd be like, I'm going up to Don house, you wanna come? I'd be like, nope. Be like Mike Tyson coming. I'd be like, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. And I would never, I would never go. I would never go up there. I just never had the interest. I wanted to meet him because of what people used to tell me. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just knew that my reaction around somebody that tempered would. It's gonna be a train wreck. Yeah, but it's yeah. good to know yourself too, like you say, because if he get aggressive, you already know how you is. Like when I asked you the question, have you ever been afraid? No, you knocking Mike slap out. It's uh, me and, and and I mean, I mean, it's just it wouldn't have been a good. It wouldn't. Have, it wasn't time for us to meet because I done met a lot of guys and and man, we just jailed and. Like brothers, right? You know I was just, I think me, I just was scared to to meet him and it not go well and end bad. You know what I'm saying? Understandable. That's understandable. We got a question for you from Sportsinator Terrell. Shout out to Sports Fire, man. Y'all know what it is, Sports Fire. We on fire, man. Anyway. His question was to you, Mr. Bailey. It was about the guns down, hands up movement. Uh, and basically like about the street brawls that's being heavily promoted right now. Do you have any interest in that? Like uh, promoting a, a street fighter or just like, how do you feel about the guns down, hands up movement? I mean, I, I haven't I haven't really heard about it. I mean, where is down there at, 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 at Miami? There's in Miami. There's other places too. They're getting big. I think I have it's a, that, um, license, but now it's it's real now. It's a real sport. I haven't I haven't heard I haven't heard about it. But I mean, again, my whole reason for leaving Miami is because I wanted to do something about it. Because I mean, most of the killings was starting in our neighborhood where we grew up. You know what I'm saying? Right. And when me and my wife put our put our plan together, we had a, we had everything wrote down from bracket to bracket, where my lawyer had put together for us, and we took it to the mayor to sit down with him, and he looked at it and said he liked everything that was in it. Okay. But he didn't want to put us at Buccaneer Park. He wanted to put us at another park somewhere else in the Spanish neighborhood. And I said, this, this is not for me. This is for me to try to help my friend's kids because they the ones out here killing each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I know at our park, I could have had a big impact on what's going on in our neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And once he once he 
decline that right there, it was, I knew it was time for me to leave from down there because I'm not finna sit around and watch everybody, my friends' kids kill each other up. And I mean, eventually, I mean, it's so close to me, eventually I'm gonna be involved. Yeah, you're gonna be affected by it some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So I knew right then it was time for me to get, get mine up and get on about it up. Yeah, and it's sad because you had so much you could have brought to Miami and just like all the community, all the urban community, period, not just try to single it out to a Pacific race, um, the Hispanic community, which I already have all, they have everything, all the resources that you already need over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have done me no good over there. I mean, I would have been just over there chilling, getting free money. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. Hey. Well, you tried, my brother. Next question for you. Who was your hardest fight? Who did you fight that, I mean, if you felt like he was equal or possibly better than you? I mean, I mean, I, I, he wasn't better than me. He just he just had more years in the game than me, and he had to fought a lot of more champions than I had fought at that time, and he just was doing things in the ring that kind of had me like, what the hell is he doing? You know what I'm saying? And this guy, he was he was a Mexican, Mexican, uh Hector Lopez. Hector he, was Lopez. A, he was a silver, um, I think he got silver in the Olympics. Okay. And this guy, I'm talking about, he fought, he fought Casa Zoo, he fought Miguel and Hell Gonzalez. I mean, he fought, he fought a lot of the top, he even fought the champion that I beat for the title. You know what I'm saying? And all of these guys, he it went the distance and they could they kind of they kind of robbed him in a couple of those fights, you know what I'm saying? But this guy, he was, I mean, he just was doing so much. I mean, putting his hands behind his back and then poop hit me. I'm like, I ain't know where it was coming from, but I just I just had to overpower him and use my power against him, and I was able to stop him. Nobody else was able to stop him. Oh, you put him down. Oh yeah. Okay, euthanized them like a horse. Yeah, I think I stopped. I think I stopped them in like the ninth round, somewhere around up in there. That's where that power will come in. That's where that gift come in. That gift curse yep. to come in and fight over. I'm tired of this. Yep. I'm tired just, of this. Just when you think it's over, bang, yeah. and it's over. <laughs> hey, so I had another question for you. This one coming in from Destiny from Miami. She wanted to know what just kept motivating you to continue to fight. So after you got through with your, let's say, 20th or 30th fight, what made you just want to keep fighting? Or was it for to feed the family? Or was it just that's what you like to do? I mean, I think my career helped a lot of more people than it helped me. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 I just think God made me. That's, I think boxing was my service. You know what I'm saying? Like people, people that have just come in my circle, was able to leave out my circle and go do amazing things after they had done touch base with me. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't, uh, it's just like, I wouldn't get focused, like really, really focused until after I got a loss. Like I, I never lost two fights in a row. Like I would, if I lose a fight, I'm gonna come back with a vengeance and just mow down shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Until I feel like, ah, and then I need another wake up call. Then boom, I lose another fight. And then I come back mowing down shit again. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. That's interesting. You never lost two fights in a row. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I just, it just, I mean, after I lost, I, I, I just kind of like wake me up. But in another essence, if I'm winning, if I'm just straight winning and looking unstoppable, nobody would fight me. Yeah, go back to that. Nobody will put their fighters. Because it was um, something you said in another interview that I picked up on. 
nobody will fight you at 154 weight class. No, they didn't. No, not saying nobody will fight me. Promoters wasn't going to take a chance and put me in with one of their fighters at 154 because uh, my age and if I beat them and really hurt them, their careers are over and they, they can't do nothing else with them. Yeah, which makes sense, but at the same time, he's a fighter. What if he wins? But see, this 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 way you separate like the real boxing promoters, Don King would never let a fighter uh starve. He would never, he would never let a fighter starve. Don that's why. A lot of the old fighter Don would have fighters that was way up in the age, but still fighting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because no, he, sure they eat. he he made sure they eat. You know what I'm saying? Made sure they eat. I'm glad you're telling this out of Don King because a lot of us out here on the outside looking in don't even know this part of Don King because they're always pushing a a, a bad narrative about him. I mean, this how this is done right here. I me myself, I don't I don't win in Don office, and he would literally certain fight. He would say, "How much you want?" Now, if you tell Don, "I want two million, and he give you two million, but then you turn around and found out he made fifty million, who you gonna blame? You should only blame yourself. Don't pocket watch Dunn because he gave you exactly what you asked for. Thank you. My point exactly. Yeah, I gave you exactly what you wanted, and then I got what I needed. No, don't pocket watch. I had a question for you, too, about um, Manny Pacquiao, man. Why that never took place? Well, after the Mike Jones fight, if y'all saw the Mike Jones fight, y'all seen Manny Pacquiao lose after my fight. Correct. So after Manny Pacquiao lost, um, we offered his promoter uh, um, a fight with me after he had just lost. And they basically said, go to hell. I'll <laughs> uh, go to hell. Hung the, hung the phone up. Hung, I mean, literally hung up. Didn't even say, no, we don't want that fight. Hung it up. No. Mm. And the person that called in was supposed to be a good friend of Manny Pacquiao's promoter. <laughs> wow, he said, hell no. Hell no. And like, hung up the phone. The no. You mean like hell to the no, like this is not even an option. This is not on the table. We're not even gonna think about this. Well, no, no piece of it. Mind you, if Mike Jung would have beat me, his next fight would have been against Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, that's disrespectful. So Mike would have had an opportunity to fight Pacquiao, but I can't get a chance to fight, and I just knocked out Mike. Exactly. Not fair, not fair. That's boxing, though. The inside of boxing, y'all getting it live and raw. Welcome to Sports Fire, everybody. We have a champ here, Mr. Randall Bailey himself, the knockout king. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. We are here. We are live. We're getting it in. Um, Mr. Bailey. How many other countries, what well, total countries have you fought in? Uh, let me see. Belgium, Paris. Belgium, Paris. Um, Belgium, Paris, uh, where else? Oh, man. How about Australia? Yeah, Australia. Uh, where else? I'm getting brain cloudy now. It's all good. Just to not let them know, though, you are well-traveled. It wasn't just America where you boxed at. Yeah, I, I'm 
Man, I've been all, all over. around the world. I've been all over. Hey, I remember um, a couple of years ago, whatever happened to the club promoter? Remember you was doing your thing inside the Mint? Yeah, it just, it just, it just started getting kind of crazy because you got to think. Once when we stopped, that's when a lot of the, the killing started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause remember they had they had a big old shootout up there, yeah, and yeah. A, couple, a couple of homeboys got killed up there, and it just it just. Uh -uh. In fact, I think I end up, I end up leaving maybe a year and a half later. That's when I end up moving. Seemed like it was perfect timing. I mean, man. I can truly say when we was when we was out there, it wasn't we were we weren't having all those problems. wasn't no fights, wasn't no shootings. I mean, and you got the police, the police station right there, and people still getting shot. Yeah, it's wrapped down the cup. Nobody cares, and they built it around it on purpose. That didn't work though. You, you know what I'm saying? So when I had it though. It was nice. It was vibed out. It was a good exactly. night. When no when all that when no crazy stuff, you come in, you have a good time, you go home, everybody make it home safe. I would I I remember one one morning I got up, I was taking my baby to school, and I see McDonald's roped off. And they like, yeah, dude done follow, follow, follow the dude from the mint. And follow him right there to McDonald's Drive through and lit him up right there. I say, man, this is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> can't be that serious, brother. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it was good vibe because I remember y'all used to do the um, um, I forgot what time of the beat, but y'all used to do the, the blackout. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we always we always had a theme a theme for the night like we did Hollywood night. We did uh, glow in the dark night. We did. Um, um, a luau, you know what I'm saying? We always had a little theme going with it, but it was just Go even ahead. when we had we had to stop because people people started hating because we was keeping our own money. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Y'all y'all don't want to put in on the production of what it takes to put all this stuff together, but y'all want a piece of the outcome. Yeah. You want to put in now as soon as you see it jumping, you want to put in on the liquor, you want to put in on the bill sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, buddy. But I want to ask a couple more questions for your home team. I wanted to know when you was on um when you was doing your thing in the boxing world and you was on your rides coming up, and I know you was around a lot of celebrities and things like that. How was the ladies treating you, man? <laughs> what about <them> ladies, <laughs> it was too many of them. Just know that. Too, too many of them? Okay. Too like, many of them. Instead of too many. You got it. I stopped, I stopped counting at 250. At 250. That one city, one state, one country. That's all that's all over all over the world. I stopped counting at 250. <laughs> Literally stop time. But come here, my let me tell you, me and my homeboy, we had this thing going. We said we had a contest going to see who could who could do who could hit a hundred a year. Okay, okay. You should have called me. I never he, he the one told me about it because I I never used to like talk to girls like that, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, all they could do is say no. Like I, I would have me a couple little pieces but he was like man all they could do is say no so he was like yeah, you just talk if you talk to 10 a day shit you probably come up on about six or seven man that's crazy because i swear that's how we used to think too when we was younger all they could say is no and i was like shit like you say if you talk to 10 well if i get two i'm good and only rush the baddest. So the two that you do wind up with, they were bad ones. And it's like, it's like after a while, I mean, I don't know, I guess I was cute or something. I had my braids in and shit. And we'll be riding. I'll be on the passenger side. 
and my dog be driving, and chicks will pull up on the side and be trying to holler at me. I'll be like, what's going on? They be like, what y'all doing? I'll be like, hey, we finna boop, boop, boop. And I'm talking about just like that, boop. Get in and out. Take them back, shoot them down, let them go. I and mean, that's this- That's because they don't even know who you are, like, so that's even better. Like, it's like every day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that's living, that's life, though. That's 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 when you can say you have truly lived your life. Now I can settle down and I, think, I can be I think, uh, I think God was just getting me prepared for the big show. <laughs> that's all it was. That's all it was. We have it's to like, be out there to experience it before you get to the big show because you ain't gonna know what you got if you never was out there experiencing it. Man, I'm talking about we we used to be in a strip club. Sunday to Sunday. I mean, we start we start at happy hour. We start, <laughs> yeah, y'all ain't playing. And we go from club to club to club to club all day because I we had no job. We ain't got no job. We getting, you know what I'm saying? We doing our thing, getting money. And already. We got time. All day. Club to club to club. Trick off. Man, it ain't tricking if you got it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, that's true. That's real too, though. But um, shout out to Sports Five. Shout out to Randall Bailey once again. Dade County. This is home team right here. For the rest of the viewers who didn't know who he was, y'all pull that man up. You could yell it in your Google, your Siri. Just say who's the knockout king of boxing. They're gonna show you my man right here, Mr. Randall Bailey himself, the knockout king. We appreciate it. It was an honor for my boy to come through here because he didn't have to do this for us. He got other things he's doing in life. But, man, much love and respect for you, son. And I'll be linking with you very soon up the road, man. Oh, for sure. You know, when you get up here, holler at me. Oh, you already know. That's already, bro. Love, man. And we're going to link soon. Hello, hello, hello. Who you with? Sports fight. Who against? All I-